Okay, we're back. Notice that this is still a public meeting. Got that? He put his mask back on. He's talking on the phone. He's talking on his phone. This is a public meeting in process. But he's talking on his phone. They're not supposed to be doing this. Okay? But we're muted, so we don't know what they're talking about. Again, note that neither one of them, I, this is fine. That's their privilege, whether or not they want to wear a mask. But don't be phonies, you know, putting their mask on just because they're having the, the health board meeting and certain people were there. This is, and he keeps just rubbing his face and coughing and... Have you seen either one of these people washing their hands with all that wonderful disinfectant that the county's buying? Well, we have the CEO from the hospital slash nursing home. Still have 11 people on. I don't know if she's Carol over here is, uh, well you can't see, maybe just left it on, because uh, it's funny she's on all day morning, but anyway, let's, uh, this is the 11.30, it's 11.29, our chair our chairman, I would think that Blanche, since she just got trained, commissioner's training, she would know how to conduct a meeting. This guy doesn't. Forget about Adela. Hey, Ron, back on. Uh, is there time for Maria Stoppler County Hospital? Maria, you there? Hi, um, good morning, everyone. What you got? Okay, um, well. Do you have the document? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, oh, yeah. I did not realize that Mike was retiring, so when you see him, you know, tell him I wish him all the best in his new adventure. Okay. Um, okay, so the financial report, um, we did hold the board meeting early on December 15th um, to avoid the, the chaos of the holiday. Um, but as of that time of, of the board meeting, um, we did have um, a positive balance in our checking account with payroll coming out. Um, the projected cash available um, was negative 63, but as you know, the, the money flow is very fluid and um, we expect through January 15th to get about 313000 in with about um, 150,000 out in payables, which will leave us by mid-month at approximately nine days cash on hand, just under a hundred thousand dollars. And in the financial report, let me pull that up. Sorry. Okay. October was a really outstanding month for collections. Um, and November was okay. It was it was slightly below budget. Um, so you'll see that our numbers, when we compare them year uh, month to date, you'll see it's less than October. But year to date, we're really not that far off the mark um, because November utilization was down from the prior month. Um, but the two targets that were on track were hospital days at 13 and CAT scans. Uh, and that helped to keep our revenue up for the month of November. Those areas are strong. Um, so ER and CT are our, our big standouts here to date. And like I said, when you go to the next page, when you see compared um, target to the prior month, um, October was just a really busy month, and November was slightly below target in most areas, except for hospital bill billable days and CT scans. So, and then the next page where you look at comparing it to prior year, you can see that the drumming clinic was still holding steady 
hospital billable days were, were good. Um, swing bed billable days did not make the target of 18, there were only 10. Um, but like I said, with um, ER and CT being strong, it made up for that. So overall, See, notice um, the were revenue reading, for which she provided in November, to them, which is what we talk about. But the, the public hasn't meeting, been provided with was um, about forty three percent below budget. That's listening but remotely. But overall, um, when you compare it, is we're we should be year to date. We're only um, like negative four percent um, on our year to date target. Um, when we okay, look at on, are you on page three or page um, four? That was that was when you look at it. It says page five. Okay. Okay. Sorry if I'm moving too quickly. Okay. Traveler costs were still high, um, but we are within about forty-five hundred dollars of our budget overall. Uh, traveler costs are really going up exponentially um, because they're realizing the agencies are realizing that they can get more money because the demand is so high. So where we used to pay, you know, sixty to Some seventy dollars an hour for a travel nurse, we're getting offers now for a hundred and seventy-five to two fifty an hour. So obviously we're not taking those, um, and we're trying to make do with Yolanda and I um, filling all those gaps. Um, but you know we're we're hoping this is going to normalize soon now with the vaccine coming out that people won't won't be able to demand those prices. So we're 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 hopeful for for better news in that in that department. Um, but overall, when we look at our balance sheet, um, we did in November release an additional $145,000 from restricted funds to cover um, expenses that are related to COVID. Um, uh, that gave us an ending cash on hand that the end of November of $302,000. Okay. Oh, our small business loan. We received a, a Paycheck Protection Program loan through the Small Business Association as part of the COVID relief funds, and that was fully forgiven as of December 2nd. So that was very noteworthy. That was 410000 for Paycheck Protection. Any questions on the financials overall? So can you explain to me that small business thing again that you just stated? What 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 was that? I didn't understand. Uh, absolutely. Um, as part of the COVID relief, the CARES Act funds that were distributed towards the beginning of the pandemic, um, small businesses, which is uh, defined as a business um, with less than um, 500, 500 employees, I believe. Um, and meeting other criteria, small businesses were eligible to apply for a forgivable loan to cover payroll expenses. So when our utilization was really um, low in the beginning of the pandemic, we were able to use these funds to pay our employees and you know keep our um, keep our accounts from falling into the red. Uh, we received four hundred and ten thousand dollars to cover payroll over a several month period, and if you meet all of the requirements of the loan, it will it's forgivable. So you can only use it for um, for payroll to maintain employees, and you could use a small percentage of it for utilities. Um, so we met all the criteria. We used all the funds and then the Small Business Association through the federal government um, was able to forgive that loan so we don't have to pay it back. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, that was a, it, that was a really vital thing to keep the small businesses open. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so what do they do now? If, if, if that's all about it? Yeah, we're over that, the worst part of it, where in the beginning when our utilization was really low, so utilization has come back up 
I mean, it's a little sporadic at, at times, um, but right now we're, we're able to hold our own in terms of uh, making payroll. Where, where our expenses lie related to COVID is getting extra equipment. There's certain types of equipment that um, we've had to purchase um, either as a one-time purchase or ongoing, uh, you know, additional masks, gowns, gloves, face shields, um, respiratory equipment, um, CPAP, BiPAP assisted um, devices for the ER, um, things like that that we've had to purchase. So that bumps our expenses up. So that's what we can use the remainder of our um, COVID relief funds for. <clears throat> right now we're able to hold our own in terms of payroll. Any other financial questions? No. Okay. So in the administrator's report, um, I recapped where we were as of December 15th in terms of um, our state COVID data, total cases, total recovery. Now that has all since changed. And we are on the downward swing again with number of, case, of active cases. Um, that is improving statewide. Um, in terms of the vaccine, um, the important things to know is that we did receive our uh, first distribution of uh, vaccines on just, it was just before Christmas. So we waited until December 28th to actually start giving out those vaccines to our long-term care patients and staff because we needed to make sure that, you know, just in case of any allergic reactions that we had a provider in the building and not just on call. So we waited until after the holiday when we knew we had enough enough people on hand. Um, also, these uh, vials, as they as they arrive, they are frozen and they're kept in a regular um, ref uh, freezer and then they can be thawed in the refrigerator. But they're multi-dose vials. So once you take the vial out and defrost it and you pierce the vial, to get the 10 doses per vial. That vial is only good for six hours. So you have to line up, you know, sets of 10 people at a time to make sure that you use it within all of it within the six hour period because you don't want to waste any. So um, we've been real cautious in scheduling appointments so that we don't um, have any waste. So we have, as of today, we are, we are using up the last of those doses. We did have some doses left over after we did our long-term care patients and all of our staff and first responders. Um, we did have some doses left over, so we proceeded to vaccinate the, um, the next group, which was um, 87 to 97-year-olds in our, in our county. So we called them and any of them who, who wanted the vaccine were scheduled to come and get it today in that age group. So as we get our next disbursement of vaccine, we'll move down the list based on age and we'll get, you know, the entire group of you know, 75 and older uh, vaccinated as well as um, teachers, um, child care providers, um, let's see, the grocery store, the post office. Um, Maria, how do you let people, how are people uh, notified I have public health is assisting me on gaining the names and contact information for things like teachers, grocery store, post office, um, and any critical infrastructure um, workers. All of the 75 and older, I'm pulling a list from anyone who's ever used hospital services since we got the electronic health record. So that's pulling up most of them. And then everyone that I talk to, uh, because a lot of people call to make sure that they're on the list. I ask them if there's any friends or neighbors that they know of that may not doctor here or maybe don't doctor at all, to have them please call me so that I, I can make sure that I include them. Because the, those are the ones that I'm concerned we're gonna miss, is the ones that um, maybe don't doctor at all. Um, if, if they doctor somewhere else, their primary care provider will, will catch them. I mean, they will be contacting them. 
but um, that starts today. <laughs> no, I, I the ones that we did today were already scheduled. That was eighty-seven to ninety-seven year olds. I took the first twenty that in that age group that agreed to take the vaccine, and I scheduled them for today. Okay. So as soon as I get. Do many people refuse the vaccine? Um, a, f a handful. A handful. They said, you know what, give the vaccine to someone else. I don't normally leave my house. You know, I I'm fine. You know, I, I made it to 97. I'm good. Um, yeah, but uh, the ones that refused said, you know, I, I really don't feel like I'm at great risk because I never leave my house. So they, they declined. But for the most part, most people were very, very interested in getting it and excited and, and pleased. Mm -hmm. They had the opportunity to do so. Um, we had really good results. Uh, we did all of our long-term care patients um, on Monday the 28th. And I, I work night shift so I could stay with them all night just to make sure that no one had any reactions. And they did fabulous. Um, mm -hmm. The only the only feedback I'm getting from like staff are, is that their arm was sore, very very similar to when you get a tetanus a tetanus vaccine, or they slept well that night. Hmm. So yeah, um, a, a couple people had some what they described as some body aches that they took a little Tylenol and then that was fine. But some you know the most common thing was that the site was sore, um, and they slept well, so that was a win. You know, I, 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 that was really nice to see. That was comforting, and um, it really it, it helps the other other people who may have been on the fence as to whether or not they they wanted to take the vaccine. So I think seeing all their other colleagues and all of our long term care patients do so well with it, um, I think that that gave them the confidence to come forward and get theirs. You, you said you had a meeting here the other day? I had what? I'm sorry? A medical meeting. What does that mean? The board, the board meeting, medical? Was he brought up? Was he brought by the ambulance? Also, oh, yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah, I don't think they had the um, your letter by then, because we oh. met so early on the 15th. But in speaking, yeah, heard that, we're just curious. Correct. I know. And I know that Jim Wald Billing, as the board chairman, um, has made a response, and I, I'm thinking that you probably just haven't received it yet. Because he said he would respond on behalf of, of the board after they spoke. Mm -hmm. but you should be hearing something from him very soon. Um, now, in terms of the vaccine, when we get our uh, next allocation, a vaccine when it arrives I'll go down the list and call um, I'll call more people and schedule them um, to come in and get their vaccine so um, I'll tell you as well um, if you know of anyone who may not be you know who may not have doctored here in the in the past you know three or four years uh, to give me a call just so I make sure that you know I know they're out there and that I can call them and get them scheduled if they're interested in, in getting a vaccine it does require 97 to 97 yeah i did 87 to 97 today that was that was how many doses i had left it matched um it matched that number of people because we, we make every effort to make sure we use every single dose in the vial and don't don't waste it so. elena has a question okay elena did all the staff get vaccinated is one of the questions. Um, not a hundred percent. We had a couple people, um, I think it's about three. Um, one had a very, very severe anaphylactic reaction to a previous vaccine. So um, that person is going to wait. And the other two have uh, very significant allergies and they just weren't comfortable right now getting the vaccine. So, you know, we're, we're hopeful that you know, they will be able to, to take it soon. 
But the one with the anaphylactic reaction, um, we're just going to be really, we're going to let her consult with her, um, with her allergist and make sure that they're all on board. So this, so mostly, mo most everyone, um, but there, there were a few stragglers. And did they get a fact sheet? That's the other question. Yes. Yes, everyone gets a fact sheet. Everyone gets a reminder card for when they're to come back for their second dose. There you go. It's um, about 28 days, uh, 28 to 30 days approximately until their second dose. So they're monitored. And after the second dose, um, it's reported now to it's be about 95%. See what he did? He just put it low. See what he He just put it low. So you can't see his face. Any other questions? See that? I don't. So around here, are they going to require a mask after the vaccine? Look at that. Um, in the short term, yes. See what he did? Uh, Look because at that. We're, you know, we're waiting until he we get to the general public. He purposely put his iPad down so we couldn't see him. Look you know, at once that. Once we get the general public vaccinated Look at their second dose. Um, this is the respect you know, that, that they have that for the change. public. But right now, right now we're recommending continued um, distancing and mask wearing and hand washing. Some of the vaccines will just be single dose, though, right? No. No. Uh, no, they're, they're, they're all two doses. There you go. Even like some of these coming, they're uh, coming up the ladder. Oh, I think Johnson sure and Johnson are one. Yeah, like Johnson. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about the potential the other ones coming up. Yeah, they may be, yeah. Yeah, but right now we only have the Moderna vaccine because that's the one that requires regular um, uh, freezer temperatures. And if you get vaccinated with the Moderna vaccine, then you should be you should receive your second dose with Moderna. They're right now, not recommending you mix. Like if you get Pfizer first, you should get Pfizer as your second dose. If you get Moderna as your first dose, you should get Moderna as your second dose. Don't don't mix it up. Uh, in nice terms of uh, therapeutics, um, we do have 20 doses of the. Um, looking at the time. Bam If I'm saying yeah, yeah. Looking at time. It's it's a difficult one to pronounce. It's Bam Lanivimab. It is the monoclonal antibody treatment. We do have 20 doses that were given to us by the state, and that can be used for anyone who tests positive within 72 hours of their symptom onset and before they require hospitalization. And it's expected that we use this on people who are over the age of 60 with underlying health conditions that place them at higher risk for severe severe illness. So we do, if we get a, if we get a, a community member um, who fits this criteria, we can give them the antibodies. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other COVID questions? <coughs> No. Okay. Nope. Um, nope. Sounds good. All right. We can. Oh, another Elena one. Oh, Elena. Can you read that to me, Blaine? So the, the vaccines are still in a clinical trial phase. Question. Um, they have been granted emergency use authorization only, so they have to be used very specifically within the guidelines provided. But they are available. The clinical trials, as far as I know, um, were concluded, and then they issued no, the they emergency use authorization. No, they haven't. Yeah. No. But there's other. Yeah, like you said, the the Johnson and Johnson, or is it AstraZeneca? Uh, those are still in clinical trial. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh. No thanks. No. Um, under the business department revenue cycle team. We did complete our Medicare cost report, and it shows that we will receive um, $341,807 um, back from Medicare. And the majority of that receivable um, is due to the inpatient side of care, particularly swing beds. So a decrease in the number of swing bed days in the past year, it increased our, our daily rate substantially. Okay, so in other words, we didn't have the number of swing bed patients that Medicare anticipated based on looking at previous year's numbers. 
However, we still have to maintain a constant level of staffing, supplies, and resources, so our cost to deliver care was higher than they anticipated. And since we're paid for services based on our overall cost to deliver care, they, Medicare, underestimated the daily rate, and then we received this lump sum payment. Does that make sense? Understanding the cost report is always a huge hurdle, so um, any questions I might be able to answer on that one, I gladly will. Um, we recently renewed our commercial liability insurance with Yellowstone Insurance, and we did see a premium decrease of $441 annually. And there is a new regulation um, that started January 1st of this year that has to do with price transparency in healthcare. Previously, they asked that, um, or they required, that every facility post their charges um, online, you know, like on their website, in a format that's machine readable, understandable to the general public. Um, so we were in compliance with that. We, we have posted all of our prices because, you know, rightfully so, people should be able to shop for their services, so they should be able to compare the prices from one place to the next. But now, as of January of this year, their new rule um, requires that we post standard charges, okay, like I said, on that website, and now they want uh, payer-specific negotiated rates for 300 specific shoppable services. They want us to include the standard charge for all items and services provided and defined as a gross charge, a payer-specific negotiated charge, and he looks like he's all bored. And Doesn't any de identified minimum does. and maximum. Look at him. So this was a much more complex undertaking Look at that him. we don't have the resources to compile this he, information. By the way, he's been a commissioner for they needed. over so eight years So with the help now. of the Montana Hospital Second Association, town. they recommended this is, um, a vendor this is a to all of their smaller hospitals, and mm -hmm. they negotiated a lower a lower cost for their service. So we contracted with Para Healthcare Analytics, um, and they developed and provided the data in a loadable format, and that cost us $9,750 just for the setup, and then $2,250 every quarter for housing the data, doing any updates, storage, maintenance, and support. But this is discounted from their usual price of $15,000. So that will be up on our website, um, it should be finished very, very soon. They're compiling all the data, um, and that'll be that'll be available for people to compare prices on a much more detailed level. Good. Right. Good. All right. We did seven scans in November, and um, we we did the statistics on that um, before we before we uh, had our CT machine. Our ER transfer rate was about 15%. So we transferred out about 15% of all of our hey, um, ERs. Here. And now since we have the Has CT machine down. and we're able to do those um, services here, our transfer rate has dropped down to only 9%. Mm -hmm. So that really shows the value that the CT has brought to the facility. Mm -hmm. And that's why our hospital billable days are up because now we can complete the diagnosis on someone and keep them here for perhaps observation or care and treatment because we didn't send them out to someplace else. So that's really important to know. Okay, anything else? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right. Happy Very New Year. Uh, another comment. She said that um, use was approved that can, uh, the emergency use authorization was approved under certain conditions, not um, not the drug. Like all persons vaccinated must be monitored and tracked. Is that correct? Yes, yes. They have to be monitored for at least 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So each patient we keep them the, after their vaccine, we keep them and watch them for about 15 minutes and make sure they don't minutes. have any reactions. I didn't see that. Any more comments? Looks like we're done. Thanks. All Thank right. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. So now they monitored it.
It's 11.57. They monitored it. He's getting up to leave. Did they adjourn for lunch? No. Didn't adjourn for lunch. This is going to be a good year. Unbelievable. Look at this. Unbelievable. They didn't adjourn for lunch. And I don't know where that 15 minutes of monitoring comes in. Because they have to track them. There goes Antonelli out. Look at this. Look at that. This is the way we're going to do meetings. This is the way we're going to do a meeting. Unbelievable. Look at this. Now you compare this with other counties. I mean, uh, Cascade County at their meeting, do you know how many pages of documents they had for their, I believe it was December 22nd meeting? Over 220 pages. Everything that they discussed was there. Every single page. Not this one. Not this one. 